Aristotle's is saying he just discovered why <laughs> adoption is banned in Islam. Unbelievable. I just looked it up. The founder of the religion caused the divorce of his adopted son's marriage, denied his adoption of him, and then married his now formally adopted son's wife. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but let me I love explain. I seeing someone this. discover this in real time. <laughs> I, just, I just went Google this. I'm not, I, I wanted to see why Islam doesn't allow adoption. And this is insane. I was so not expecting reason, this kind of I was worms. not expecting this. So, Muhammad, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, one day goes to his adopted son's house to see him. His adopted son's, his adopted son was called Zayd, right? And Zayd, which is the adopted son of Muhammad, his wife is named Zainab. And Muhammad goes to his son's house and he sees Zainab not covered very much. And she be sexy. She be, she had, she was tight. And Muhammad was like, oh my God. Oh my God, I want her. Okay. And she, Muhammad was so horny. By the way, guys, this is not me making like insulting Islam. This is actual Islamic narrative, okay? Muhammad was so horny for Zainab that he had to go home and pray. Like he was like, "Oh my God, oh my God, this is not good. This is not good." And Zainab could tell that Muhammad liked her. Like he was so obvious that Zainab, like when Zay, guys, this is actual Islamic scripture. I am not making fun of Islam right now. This is actual Islamic hadith. It's true. When when Zayd came to back to his house, Zainab told her her husband and Muhammad's adopted son that your dad really wants me like badly, okay? And Zayd went to his father, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, and was like, "Dude, you could have her. Just I'll, you, if you want Zainab, if you want my wife, I'll divorce her and you marry her." And Muhammad was like, no, 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 no. This is like a taboo thing. People will, people will judge me because in back then in that culture, marrying your son's wife was huge taboo. Because and then what happens? <laughs> okay. But then what happens? A Quranic verse comes down. Oh, oh, oh. A Quranic verse comes down and says very conveniently, so conveniently that Aisha points out that to Muhammad that your God keeps saying to you, this is Aisha's hadith. Aisha is on record telling Muhammad that your God seems to be like looking after your dick, doesn't he? Like your God seems to be like, you know, Allah seems to be revealing verses based on your wishes. Again, this is Aisha say calling out Muhammad on his verses. This is on record. Okay? So and a verse comes down from Allah saying that adopted children are not actually your children. This is just so that Muhammad could get his dick wet. So the reason why now adopted children are not the thing in Islam is because Muhammad was horny for his adopted son's wife. And what you, what Zayd was, his name was Zayd ibn Muhammad, so Zayd the son of Muhammad, and they changed his name to like no longer the son of Muhammad. Okay. Because very conveniently, God himself spoke and said, this is totally fine, dude, go ahead. Yeah, and go and Muhammad is on record saying that he's, this is the most embarrassing verse in the Quran, but guess why? Not because it was revealed that he was horny for Zainab, because God told Muhammad, shamed the, uh, the Quranic verse shamed Muhammad. Like, why are you worried more about what people say where I, Allah, have picked Zainab for you? So I have decided, I may, Allah is saying, I have married Zainab to you, and you're worried, you are fearing people instead of fearing your Allah. So Muhammad is ashamed of this. Muhammad says that if there's one verse in the Quran that he could remove, it would be this verse. But not because he's embarrassed about being horny for Zainab, it's because Allah has revealed to everybody that Muhammad prioritized other people's talking about him over what Allah thinks of him. So by the way, 
the, the 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 twisting and manipulation of a very skilled malignant narcissist. Top it gets worse actually. It gets oh. worse. And do you want me to get into more detail? This is very it gets very nuanced there. It gets very nuanced here. Do you want is me to tell you why this is what happens when he's with the leather? No. no. It, it's not sexual anymore. Oh, what is it? This whole thing this whole verse this whole adoption stuff oh, wait. it's about crushing rebellions and maintaining an empire oh. the, it, people don't know this this verse about Zayd and Zainab and adopted children and Muhammad being horny for Zainab people don't understand but this is actually about maintaining an empire do you do you know how do people want to know how is this getting too off topic so that adoptive sons can't make claims no 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 huh. is because islam comes from judaism and prophethood is inherited from in judaism is, is inherited from sons from fathers to sons so you have to understand, early Islamic history, Islam is not fully formed yet. Islam at that point is not, as Muslims claim, very much similar to what we recognize as Islam is today. Okay? So, Islam is more of a Christian Jewish sect that later during that Abbasid period turns into what we recognize as Islam today. So, this Jewish sect has the tradition of prophethood being inherited. When eventually the Abbasids are building and canonizing oh. Islam, what is the greatest threat to their empire? New prophets. Breaking the seal of the prophet. There was no seal of the prophet. They introduced the seal of the prophet. Oh my this God. is why this is why the very verse in the Quran that says that your adopted children are not actually your children the next line is Muhammad is the seal of the prophets so what does Zaid not being the son of Muhammad have anything to do with Muhammad being the final prophet because it wants to make clear that Muhammad has no sons and it ends with Muhammad because the whole inheritance thing of going from one prophet to another ends with Muhammad because Muhammad has no sons and they make sure in the stories of Zaid they kill him in a battle before Muhammad dies so the narrative goes and Muhammad had no sons because he need to because there had to be no competition with the now canonized religion so there's no more prophets well he did but have guess what to but guess what there was a rebellion there was a sect against the empire how did they do this how did they start a sect that branched out out of the sunni or back then canonized orthodox islam when they had no prophets you ended the line of prophethood so if you end the line of prophethood if you want to create a rebellion with its own religious brand against an empire with its own orthodox islamic religion and you have no more prophethood you create something new and you call it the imamite and if you cannot go through muhammad's son you go through muhammad's daughter which is fatima and married to Ali, and you create the Ahlul Bayt concept, and now you have Shia Islam, and Shia Islam will become the brand of your rebellion. This is why Fatima becomes such a significant thing in the rebellion. The against this. Yeah, and this is all comes from the story of Zayd and Zainab has a political purpose. Anyways, I love that deep dive. That was good. Yes, very good. Yes. Yes. Do you guys appreciate what I just said in the last year? This is like if your mind has not been blown by what I just said, you did not understand what I just said. That was profound. Yeah.
Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.